According to the World Health Organization, iron deficiency is the most common nutritional disorder in the world. So why is it so important? What is iron even used for? What blocks iron absorption? And why do so many women suffer from a deficiency? All that and more in today's video. Hey guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Madison Don't and here on this channel I teach you the science behind health so that you can better understand your body and become the healthiest version of you. This video today is actually the second video in my supplement series so if you haven't seen the first one on vitamin D then I recommend you go watch that after this but basically so many of you loved my original supplements video from months ago and my free ebook that's linked in the description below yet my DMs still get flooded with questions about particular supplements so I thought that I would make this supplement series to dive deeper into the popular ones and answer any questions that you may have. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of the valuable nutritional information to come then make sure to subscribe below and hit that little notification bell so that you actually get informed each time a new video comes out. Also make sure to let me know down in the comments what supplements you'd like to learn more about and any questions that you may have and let's get into it. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about all things iron and I'm going to be covering what iron is actually used for and why it is so important in the body, symptoms of deficiency and the difference between an iron deficiency and anemia, the best sources of iron and how vegetarians can meet their needs too, other food sources that enhance or inhibit iron absorption and how to know if you need iron supplements. Now remember what I talked about in the first video and if you haven't seen that one that is that supplements are a great tool but getting your nutrients from your diet is always going to be better. Therefore supplements should not be used to replace a high nutrient diet but should only be used in the case of a deficiency or to help your body with a job that it is struggling to do on its own such as inflammation or immunity. With that said, let's now jump into why iron is so important, what it's used for, and whether or not you may need supplementation. So while I've never been iron deficient, I know a lot of women who are. And now iron deficiency doesn't just occur in women, but it is more common because women lose more blood than men due to menstruation. Lucky us. In fact, according to research, 10 to 20% of menstruating women are iron deficient, with 3 to 5% of these women also being anemic. Now, before I explain to you the difference between iron deficiency and anemia, we must first have a look at what iron is used for and why it is so important in the body. So, let me ask you, why do we breathe? Now, you probably said to get oxygen, yeah? But why do we need oxygen? Now, if you said to live, I'm sorry, but that's not a good enough answer. So get ready to learn your first gold nugget of information in this video. And some of you may know this from high school, but have just forgotten. But the way that we make energy is actually opposite to plants. So while they use photosynthesis, we use a process called cellular respiration. And as you can see up on the screen, these processes are pretty much exact opposites of each other. So plants use carbon dioxide and water to make food and oxygen, whereas we use food, aka the glucose from carbohydrates, and oxygen to make a lot of energy, a little water, and some carbon dioxide waste product that isn't useful, so we breathe it out. So in other words, the whole reason we do cellular respiration, aka eat and breathe, is to make the energy to power our bodies. Now, these little balls of energy, or molecules, are known as ATP, and for all you fellow nerds out there, that stands for adenosine triphosphate. And it's quite fun to say, so I'll break it down adenosine triphosphate, so three phosphates. But anyway, I want you to think of this energy molecule as a lightning strike, and each lightning strike is a little spark of energy that is used to make things happen. Energy is needed in the body for a ridiculous number of things, such as to make the smooth muscle of the heart pump, to allow important nutrients into and out of cells, to power metabolism and digestion, and to allow the signals of the brain to jump from one nerve cell to another. Heck, energy is even needed to make more energy. So when you deprive the body of the oxygen needed to power itself, it's like pulling a fridge's electrical cord out of the wall and expecting it to stay cold. It may for a little while, but eventually everything's going to go off. So you're probably wondering where iron comes into all of this. 
Well, despite iron having many roles in the human body, perhaps its most important is its ability to bind oxygen. As shown on the screen, iron sits within the hemoglobin molecule, which is just the fancy way of saying red blood cell, and it allows oxygen to be carried through the bloodstream to the cells that need it most to make that ATP, our little energy lightning strike. Some of iron's other roles include binding oxygen in muscle cells for muscle contractions and serving as a cofactor to many reactions, including those involved in making hormones. After explaining the role of iron, it makes sense here to discuss some symptoms that you may be experiencing if you are iron deficient. So hopefully after explaining how iron is so important in carrying oxygen to the cells to make energy, you can understand how a major symptom of iron deficiency is fatigue. What's important to note though is that other vitamins and minerals such as vitamin B are also crucial in the making of ATP. Therefore, if you are just guessing based off your symptoms instead of getting a blood test, you might think you're iron deficient, but really you could be deficient in another nutrient essential in the energy making process such as vitamin B. Now, if someone is severely iron deficient, then they are likely to be anemic. However, it's important to note that not everyone who is iron deficient is anemic and not everyone who is anemic is iron deficient. So anemia is defined as a lack of red blood cells or the presence of dysfunctional red blood cells that affect the ability of the oxygen to travel to the cells and make ATP. For example, sickle cell anemia is not a problem with the availability of iron, but a problem with the shape of the red blood cells affecting their ability to carry oxygen. The more serious symptoms of anemia include weak muscles, brain fog, headaches, loss of color in the skin, low body temperatures, and even pica, which is weirdly enough when you have cravings for inedible things such as chalk. So then how do we get iron? Well, what you may not know is that there are actually two different types of iron and they're not created equal in terms of our body's ability to absorb them. The first type of iron, known as heme iron, can only be found in animal products such as meat, chicken, and seafood. However, the second type of iron, known as non-heme iron, can also be found in animal products, but is the only type of iron found in plants. Now, while this means that vegetarians are still able to meet their iron needs, it's estimated that vegetarians must eat 1.8 times more iron than meat eaters. This is because approximately 25% of heme iron can be absorbed, but only 17% of non-heme iron. This means that if you're not eating meat, you're solely relying on non-heme iron and therefore must consume 80% more to meet your daily needs. So how much iron do we actually need? Well, this brings the recommended daily intake for adults then from 8 milligrams per day for males and 18 milligrams per day for female meat eaters up to 14 milligrams per day and 32 milligrams per day for vegetarian men and women respectively. It is also important to note that after menopause around age 50, after menstruation has ceased, that the needs for women drop down to that of men, which is 8 milligrams per day. On the other hand, growing teenage boys require slightly more than adult men at 11 milligrams per day. Teenage girls going through puberty require at least 15 milligrams per day. And pregnant women have a recommended daily intake of a whopping 27 milligrams per day, according to the National Health and Medical Research Council. When you think about it, any life stages involving significant growth are going to have a greater demand for oxygen to make the energy to build the cells, and any life stages involving menstruation are going to have a higher demand for efficient red blood cells. Also remember, for vegetarians and vegans, these numbers are 1.8 times higher, and to work this out, just simply multiply these numbers by 1.8. So what do these amounts even look like in terms of food and what are the best sources of iron? Well, the best sources of heme iron are animal meats such as beef, pork, lamb, kangaroo, chicken, fish, and if you're brave, even liver and kidney. Typically, the redder the meat or fish, the higher in iron it probably is. Do be careful to choose lean meat though, as red meat can also be high in bad saturated fats. On the other hand, for vegetarians, the best sources of non-heme iron include legumes, green leafy vegetables, nuts, dried fruits, and eggs. But even if you're getting all the sources of iron, there's certain factors that affect your ability to actually absorb it, meaning that you have to be aware of your food pairings. So a few things that enhance the absorption of iron are foods high in vitamin C, vitamin A, and folic acid. For example, citrus fruits, tomatoes, and green leafy vegetables. 
the amino acids in animal meats also play a huge role in enhancing absorption. There are also particular molecules in other foods and beverages that actually block the absorption of iron, such as the polyphenols in grapes and wine, the tenons in black tea and coffee, some soy-based foods, and foods high in calcium such as milk. Now this isn't to say don't have these foods, but for optimum absorption, just make sure that you're consuming them away from your iron-rich meals and supplements. And if this is all seeming overwhelming, then don't worry because I've put some links to some awesome visual fact sheets in the description below to make your life a lot easier. Now on the other hand, while iron toxicity is rare, the only way to excrete excess iron once it has been absorbed is through blood loss. But what's cool is that unlike other nutrients, when the body has too much iron, it can actually choose to stop absorbing it. Therefore, an iron surplus is only likely either when the body is unable to regulate absorption, which can occur as a result of a genetic condition, after repeated blood transfusions, or from an overuse of supplements. Symptoms of an iron overload can include fatigue and an increased susceptibility to infections, whereas more severe iron poisoning can include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and even death in children. So how are you meant to know whether you should be taking supplements or not? Well, like all nutrients, I always recommend testing over guessing as it's the safest way to know for sure. I recommend if you're experiencing fatigue and other symptoms that you go to your doctor and ask for a blood test and see how you go. Even if your numbers are within normal range, they could still be on the verge and measuring low normal, which could still indicate a problem. So make sure you look at the numbers closely. My video coming out next week is actually on how to read your blood test properly. So until then, make sure to ask your doctor for a printout of your latest results and make sure to hit the subscribe button and also that little notification bell so that you get notified of my future videos and helpful nutritional information. If you found this video helpful, then please make sure to hit that like button below as it helps other people who may also be suffering from an iron deficiency find it on YouTube. Also head over to my Instagram if we're not friends over there already to join the growing community of other beautiful people also working to become the healthiest version of themselves. But that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video next week.